Ready, honey? Ready, honey. All right. Here we go. Oh! Nice job. <laughs> I hit my toe. Ah! <sighs> Dramatic. Yeah. <laughs> Happy Sunday, guys. Sunday fun day. Yeah. So we were going to do this down at the lake this morning. But it's so which close. Is, which is yeah. one block that way. We have a really nice beach here on Lake Carroll. It's a beautiful, like, 240-acre spring-fed lake. It's gin clear, the water. Why don't you give everyone our address, too? <laughs> Google Google map that bay at Bad Boy. Do not Google map it. <laughs> and um, we were going to go sit out on the pier this morning and, it's closed. and do our Ask AEAC then, but it's freaking closed, which is ridiculous, because, like, every beach in Florida is open now. So why our little baby White Sands Beach at our lake here is closed is annoying me. It was it was really annoying him. Yeah. How to get him back on track? He's like, we need to call them right now. I'm like, and say what? What are we paying for? Because our dues pay for access to the lake and the beach and the pier and everything that's over there. So it's like, what the what the heck, man? So we bring you this special edition of Show and Tell. Yeah. Steve went a little overboard with the show. I and did tell go overboard today. with my Show and Tell today. You want a little banana? Do you want to start or do you want me to start? Um, I think you should start. You right. have a significant I'll start items. from I'll start with this package from Donnie FL, who's my neighbor here in Florida. Him and, and Yo Yo Yolanda live over there in Orlando. Oh Bam Bam's sitting in the pool. He's too hot. He's hot. There's a black coat. He's Thank you, Donnie, for sending this. I actually called Donnie and asked him to send this over. Look at it. What is it? I have no idea. No, I know yes, what it is. Yes, you do. <laughs> because of the, the gun that's on deck for review here. And I needed something so I could do my due diligence here in the backyard <clears throat> without alerting everybody to our presence. Yeah. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Look at that. So is this is a... Look, our band is like, what is it? What is it, Bam Bam? Is that food? What is it? That is not food. That is a one half inch UNF adapter for a, a Seneca Eagle Claw it says it looks and a Donnie FL moderator. It's very exciting. You want to smell it? See, that's not food. It's not food. <laughs> but wah, so that's wah, my, wah. that is my first show and tell. Come on, lay down. So what that do, that'll, that'll thread into the, Harvey thinks it's very that'll exciting. thread into the shroud. What is the, it going to uh, do? It'll th thread into the shroud on the Eagle Claw so that I can affix one of Donnie's. Oh, so you can affix an adapter. <clears throat> Actually, I shouldn't be saying it's Donnie's because it may not be Donnie's. I may put someone else's on there. Oh, okay. Because I've been having a lot of Donnie's lately. Oh, okay. I was actually thinking about putting a zero dB but on there. But it's nice that it works with any. Huh? It works with any. Yeah, any one half inch UNF that just, I imagine there's a plug in this and it just comes out and this goes in and and then I can put whatever I want and on there. you can literally put any silence Yeah, I make it. No, we don't say silence. We say moderator. Moderator. Yeah, this, this, is, not, this is not the military. Okay. All right, you have a show and tell. You want to go? I thought it was the Assassination Club. No. Thank I you, Donnie. Appreciate you, pal. And Yolanda. I'm done interrupting you. Are now. you done? Are yeah. You sure? <laughs> I have another candy from Switzerland. Not Switzerland, Sweden. I would love to go to Switzerland. Switzerland would be great. But Sweden was great, too. He's very excited. Oh, here. It's called a crisp with an exclamation point. Crisp. It's, uh, it's by Marabou, which is apparently a very popular... Um, candy manufacturer out there. It's peanut butter and toffee, though. I'm not excited about peanut butter, so this may definitely be a Steve gig. Band Bandit's excited about peanut butter. Bandit's very excited about it. What I did notice about their candy, though, is that they all come in two. Two, two. It's always in twos. It's never like it's the whole two, thing. It's two. It's two. Although that thing doesn't look very two to me. Is it oh, good? It's not like, it's not peanut butter. It's peanut and toffee, chocolate. You know what I, I do want to mention that in um, in Marystad, Sweden, where um, where we went to film the FX factory tour, the Skittles, the rainbow Skittles that you buy there are spicy. Wait, we'll do that next time. Well, I already opened it and ate half of them. So? They just have, don't need the other half. They have <laughs> spicy hot Skittles there and they're so freaking good. They're addictive. They're super sweet. You eat them. And then, like, um, like a moment later, all of a sudden, this heat like starts to set, and it's like, it's kind of like drinking bourbon, Where's but that? in a rainbow skittle. No, babe, yeah. you know how many of those guys are gonna freak out about dogs eating chocolate? 
If you freak out about dogs eating chocolate and leave it in the comment section, we will not address your comment. Because we addressed it a couple times before. My dad's a veterinarian, yo, and some of you are oversensitive to that. It's just a common misconception. It's a common misconception. It's, just, it's not that they can't eat chocolate. They can't have pure cocoa powder in a certain quantity. In a high dose That's quantity. That's what's bad for them. It's toxic for their, their livers can't take, handle it. But like milk chocolate, even dark chocolate, it's just moderation. A piece of, uh, blah, 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 blah. This is not professional advice, so please don't kill your animal. <laughs> but a piece we of birthday know, cake, a donut. Yeah. We just know that it, a does candy not kill, bar. it does not kill RV and Bandit. That's what we're basing our scientific, scientific this, evidence on. It's so hot already. And Google research. I mean, you can Google it and you'll pull up the same info. Yeah. I don't know where y'all are, are, but here in Florida, 89 today. <laughs> and this chocolate is melting in my hand, not Eat in, it. Not in it. my mouth. I don't Eat want it anymore. It's too sweet for me. Do it to the dogs. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Uh -uh. All right. I have my next show and tell. And we're going to get to these Ask AAC questions, I promise, guys. I have 12 of them today. I cheated. Katya gets mad when I pick more than 10. What the heck, ma'am? These are Alturos slugs. And um, you may or may not know Alturos, but uh, they're in the Czech Republic. And um, if you know the Predator Polymag, you know Alturos. And I'll leave it at that. I can't really say much more. <clears throat> but Is there more to say? Yeah. Okay. But that's kind of their deal. But what's really cool about these slugs is, is they're all hand turned on a CNC machine. I'm freaking out a little bit because it's not a closed case. And I know. Well, there it is. Each one is hand turned on a CNC machine. They're on boat tails. Uh, they're not like cast or dyed or swagged or anything. What's swagged? Um, that's a... We'll get into that. In a, it's, there's all different methods of making ammunition. Yeah. Yeah. And each one of these is hand turned and I got a whole bunch of them from Alturos. They sent them directly from the check. So thank you very much. Alturos, I appreciate you. That's really cool. And we're going to start incorporating these into the culling as we get through the guns. And if any of them wind up doing well, I'll share them with you. But I'm going to need you to tell me what swag is. Let's just circle back to that. Because we already have 12 questions and more show and tell. So we're already going to be like over an hour. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's like a, that seems like all those different types fault. of manufacturing. These things is like a 15, 20 minute conversation for another day. That seems like somebody else's fault. Do not rinse your hands in the swimming pool. On your thing, like put your fingers in your mouth, like the rest I of us. I can't. I let the dogs lick human the chocolate beings. off. All right. Why don't you do the? No, my hands are wet. <laughs> do it anyway. You can do it. You can do the next show and tell. What are we doing? You're, you're unshrouding that. Jesus. That is quite large. Mm -hmm. That's what she said. Eagle claw. Made in Korea. So that's next after the R9, guys. Seneca Eagle Claw, 22 cal, under lever, adjustable power. That is not light. Mm -mm. Sam Yang actually makes these for uh, for Seneca, but then Seneca's got like, you know, they kind of do some of their own stuff with them. Does it have a butt plate that you could put onto it? It has one on there now. I know. Can you put on a bigger one? A bigger one? Yeah. Like a Crawford and Lift or something? Sure. I mean. You could, but that's not really a bench rest gun. That's like a field gun. It's supposed to have a smaller butt if it's a field gun. Um, you just it just with that under lever yeah. action, it wouldn't make a whole lot of oh, sense to be like resting it all the time. The that's a I gotcha. that's a that's a field gun. I got gotcha. you. Mm-hmm. Okay. As I understand it, the heritage of that company, those Sam Yangs, were cool. initially developed as monkey guns in Korea. They hunt, hunted monkeys with them. They have like a cut off, a shut up, a, like a one that has a barrel or a, that ends like right here. Yeah, they got a bunch of different ones. It looks like a cut off shotgun. Turn it sideways so they can see it, babe. Side profile, they can't see nothing that way. There you go. Yeah. The thing with these is they're supposed to be. This is Eagle Claw. Eagle Claw. Eagle Claw. What did I call it? I don't know. It's not like a Eagle Claw. They're, <laughs> they're supposed to be super high power. That's kind of their deal. Isn't it pretty though? See that little dial underneath? It is nice. This one? Yeah, turn yeah, it towards them so they can see. Low. Yeah, that's the power adjuster. Magazine fed. Nice weaver rail up on top. It looks like it's got all the right stuff. Magazine? Mm hmm. Yeah. So it's not a bench rest gun? No. 
I mean, I'm gonna. It's gonna be for me because I gotta try to figure yeah. out what the what the thing has to offer. But that's not how people will use it. Yeah, it's probably because I did 50 burpees yesterday that that's a little bit heavy. heavy, heavy for you. Yeah. Yeah. All right, you ready to get to some questions? I is. That's ready. all the show and tell for today. We got guys. What was it? Oh, Adam's just sticking to myself already. Florida. It's muggy too already. Mid May is when we go from gorgeous. Nice and arid to muggy. Muggy. And it's coming. Although, I mean, considering it's what, May 19th, 20th? It's not bad. Usually mid October is when it goes from like really muggy to like it starts getting nice and arid outside, yeah, so it's comfortable. And it's usually early May that it starts getting really shitty, so yeah. this is. I'll take it. We're, okay. getting, we're getting shitty. <laughs> getting shitty with it. Okay, you ready? Mm hmm. Okay. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> this question is from Rich Eichinger. Um, it was posted to an Ask AAC. Yeah, I blog. think I took all 12 of these. From, I think. No, you got one on the FX Crown Continuum Tuning Guide. Oh, yeah. I took a lot of these from the vlog, and Ask AAC. So I appreciate you guys' questions. I've been looking in yeah. both places. Okay. So, question. Question for Ask AAC, but could also be... Why Rao and other manufacturer related? I noticed shot count for some air rifle models is higher in 0.22 than 0.177, which seems counterintuitive. Is the 0.177 not creating as tight a seal as the 0.22? Is there some unanswered question slash issue with the engineering? Why isn't the 0.177 getting the higher shot count all the time in the same make of gun? Apologies if not addressed this elsewhere, but I haven't found that nugget yet. Or is it the stumping manufacturers? So there's, there might be a couple of different things going on here to the best of my knowledge. The first one would be the amount of air it takes to push a projectile is more directly related to its efficiency, the gun's efficiency than the caliber. And normally, and normally the heavier the projectile, for some reason, the more efficient oh. the gun. Really? Yeah. That the, does seem counterintuitive. The gun is like I've noticed. Like for example, if I'm if I'm reviewing a 22 cal, the 18 grain will always get more shots than the 12 grain, and I think that has to do with the way the valving and the regulator and the weight of the hammer and the heaviness of the hammer spring, all of that. I think when they come out of the factory are tuned. Each gun is kind of tuned. To be to do well with like a certain weight projectile like it has a sweet spot where it'll get the most efficiency and i think what's going on is two things one in the 177s just because it's inherently lighter some of that efficiency goes away because most 177s are lighter than 22s although there's some crossover but the other thing that i think is going on is like most like like in something like this the eagle claw I don't know for sure because I haven't done the research, but maybe they offer a 177, 22, 25, 30. Well, the reality is the factory's probably tuned that like for just one of those calibers, even if they offer it like in all of them. Yeah. And it's gonna, so you're gonna have that efficiency in one. And then when they offer it in, in like a 177, which is frankly not nearly as popular here in the States, you're, you're gonna get kind of that bastard tune, if you will, where, where the efficiency just isn't gonna be there for it. So that's my best guess without consulting with anybody um, on the manufacturing side. But that's what I've always found that heavier always does better as far as efficiency. Does that apply? Is there a caliber bigger than 0 0.22? Yes. Does that apply the higher you go? Um, again, I think it comes down to, I think it comes down to more the more how the factory set up that gun mm -hmm. to perform. Got it. Because they're dialing in, they're picking the weight of the spring, the weight of the hammer, um, the, the pressure on the spring yeah. with the hammer. They're picking this, the size of the apertures in the valving. They're, they're tuning their own regulators. And they're, they're setting that up for all of that up, I think, for one caliber, even if they offer them in multiple ones. So you, you wind up seeing different efficiencies. That's an because it's, question. Well, yeah, it's not cost effective to have something <laughs> like that. And have a different valve, a different hammer, right. a different spring, right. different valve apertures through the receiver and, and in the transfer port. It's just a, it's just a, they just can't make money like that. So I, so the, and the 177s kind of tend to be the redheaded stepchildren. Do they? If you, yeah, here in the states, 
Everyone oh, wants 2-5, 3-0. Even 2-2 two is becoming less popular, even though that's like probably my favorite. But it, isn't, isn't point one seven seven more common in the UK? I, I think one seven seven is probably more common in Europe. In general. In so general. St it would stand to reason, that's though. That's a guess. That's just a feeling, a vibe. I'm going to knock you out. It would stand to reason, though, that the some air guns are tuned to 0.177 if they are more preferred in the UK. Yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm speaking specifically about the US market. Yeah, yeah. Like no, I've I'm noticed. Just, I'm now wondering if like that holds true for the guns that were specifically tuned to 0.177. Now I want to like ask all the manufacturers when we go to a show next Well, time. you can. You can start asking that'll everybody like, and you can let be, them know. That'll be my smart of hands question. That'll be your contribution. Sorry, Rich, I'm stealing it. Yeah, I want to kind of find out now if they've noticed a pattern. Yeah. Okay. I, I think it's not them noticing pattern. I think they know how they set their junk up. And I'm guessing I'm not you'd wrong, hope, but I could be. You'd hope we'd all be aware of Because I've seen junk. enough of them to kind of get a feel for what's going on. Fascinating. Good question. Yeah, good question, for sure. That was a great question. Yeah. Next question is from Max6. It, it was specifically on the FX Crown Continuum Tuning Guide. You're a car guy? You've got to get a channel for that. <laughs> uh, should we let the cat out of the bag? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You haven't really started I know. It. I haven't done it. I've, You're I've, still brainstorming. I'm not brainstorming. Steve is still brainstorming. So I am a car guy. I'm a huge car guy have been since puberty and i think i've got katya somewhat converted here no i'm just spoiled with clean cars yeah and it's really done well with my obsessive compulsive nature yes so. yeah <laughs> it's just been a natural match <laughs> but i have been kicking around the idea of actually starting a, a um a detail youtube channel in fact i've already i've already um secured the the name for it. The name with YouTube. If you actually go on YouTube and look for Everyday Detailer, Everyday Space Detailer, that's mine. It just doesn't have any content yet it's or any any thumbnails or yet. banners. But yeah. Working on it. I'm working on it. I think that would be a good source of revenue for our family. Yeah. And I think that um, I think that I think that I would have a lot to offer and share that may enhance the world of of other car people. This guy spends way too much money on car detailing products every year. I know, because they do our taxes. And it would be nice to recoup some of that. Yeah, and I th YouTube would be the perfect place to do that, because they would run ads on there. And, uh, and that would pay for itself. And you never know. He literally just goes out and buys like every new car detailing product that ever comes out. Yeah. New detailing product? We're going to go get two. Is it good or isn't it? <laughs> I've gone through most of them. <laughs> That okay. would be cool to share. Right? Yeah, it would be cool, yeah. yeah. If you're a car guy. If you're or a car, a car guy. girl. Yeah. Um, or married to a car guy. But thanks for the question. Next question is from Michael Moritz. It was posted to an Ask AEC. I have a question that you or maybe FX can answer in the air gun industry. There should have been a punctuation. Hold on. I have a question that maybe you or FX can answer, comma. In the air gun industry, I see that the so. tube and bottle pressures are are go to a higher bar 300 than you can utilize. Okay, so the tube and bottle pressure are marked to go to 300 and you may not be able to utilize it. Why doesn't FX use a tank or a tube that can be filled to a higher bar, say 300 bar, or won't the regulators take that pressure? So what, what he's asking is... He, what is he asking? I know. To be <laughs> a YouTuber means that you need to be able to, decipher, to, be able to decipher run on sentences like this long. We need punctuation, folks. <laughs> Just basics, commas would be great. It would be great. <laughs> but um, what he's saying is he's seen in other brands of air gun them have a 300 bar capacity fill. Right, that's what I okay, that's what I got. Which is a lot. The second part confused me. Which is like 4300 psi something. Well, it's like a car that says it, you know the speedometer goes to like 260 miles an hour it doesn't actually go to it on a regular yeah. day. Yeah, well what he's asking is why, if that's an option, uh -huh. why doesn't FX do that? Because more air is more shots. And, okay. And I actually called FX yesterday. Probably for the same reason that car companies don't do that. No, I called Johan okay. and I, I actually asked him this in the two-part question. What did he say? And I said, you know what, this is a good question. All your stuff is kind of 220, 250 bar fill. 
Yeah. Why, um, and you see some 300 bars out. They're very rare, so that you know. Very rare. Like one or two brands do it out of like dozens and dozens. Okay. But um, the, the short answer was that it's so rare that there's really not the fill equipment support out there. Meaning most people aren't able to fill their guns yeah. to 300 bar. So it's just like... Does it's, like a normal thing that we have in the house not do it? It, do, it? it does it, but the problem is, like if your tank's capa if your tank's ability is 300 bar, oh, you take and your whole. gun's capacity is 300 bar, you could take a 100 cubic foot tank and get like two fills. Yeah. Just because then all of a sudden the tank's pressure drops below what the gun can right, do. Right, 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 right. And so the equipment out there just isn't really geared towards... You know, it makes more sense to have a 250 bar fill because then you take your SCBA tank yeah. and you can fill the thing 15 or 20 times off of one fill. That makes sense. Yeah, but if they match one another, then it just, it's, the industry feels like you guys wouldn't buy it because it doesn't make sense. It's not practical. It's not practical. Like nobody buys all this fill equipment to be able to fill something like Twice. one time and then have to go recharge the... That makes sense. The, that would not be practical. The big bottle. Yeah, it's just, it doesn't make sense. Although, and doesn't the continuum get like a ridiculous amount of Oh, shots it does. I mouth? mean, you get like a you get like 180 shots like at 35 foot yeah, pounds that's a lot. in 22 caliber regulated. I mean, that's a lot. come on. Yeah, that's it's a it's lot. just totally not necessary, especially especially with that brand. But what he's also asking is he did he ask something about the regulator? Negative, yes. Yeah. Um or won't the regulators take that pressure? So I asked Johan that as well. And um, the regulator housing is designed to take those pressures and more, no problem. But it would require a, a different, there's discs inside the regulator. Mm -hmm. And it would require a different tuning of those discs and springs within the regulator to work efficiently with those higher pressures. Gotcha. So it's just a giant pain in the ass and lacks practicality. Yeah. yeah. It's just not practical at this time. Now, if they come out with SCBA tanks that fill to 6,000 or 5,000 PSI, yeah. where I can get 20 fills on a, on a 300 bar air gun, it? then it then it would kind of make sense, but otherwise it just But doesn't. then would you want to carry that tank? Like, it'd be really heavy. It'd be heavier, because compressed air is surprisingly heavy. Yeah. It's a good question, though. Well, it's like that old physics question. What's heavier, 1,000 pounds of feathers or 1,000 pounds of rock? I actually had a guy comment on one of my videos one time that I'm stupid because air doesn't weigh anything. Oh, cute. When I was telling him, Listen, the, I'm not... The weight of the gun, yeah. like, filled with air? It so, actually does. I'm not the greatest with physics either, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but compressed air is surprisingly but heavy. But apparently... Significantly heavy. Apparently, that's like Physics 101. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, next question. From Rusty Lee. This was to an Ask AAC. Dear Steve, from Plant City, hey! Oh, hey, neighbor, yo! Um, Plant City is actually where I do all my filming. The okay. picnic table in the big cornfield out there. From, yeah, sorry. From Plant City. <laughs> I love seeing your family and love the channel. For Mr. Fox, I can and have shot all manner of guns on my rural property in the past. I have now lived here for 38 years. A situation arrives when I don't want the neighbors to realize I have a house full of guns, for one thing. Um, number two, I feel it's impolite to disturb the quiet serenity of the area. I can sit on the back porch and shoot and no one is the wiser. That's so true. Very considerate. I have also had my eye on an RWS 48 because I'm looking for a springer. Mm -hmm. Do you feel the solid lock of the barrel and breech would offer ant added accuracy over a regular brake barrel springer? So Would it offer an ant? <laughs> can it produce one? Yeah, hold on. I want to check something on the battery here to make sure we're not going to go out and we're not we're good yeah oh, oh, stand by stand don't by. fall in the pool stand that by. would be yep, hilarious if you just heard a splash all <laughs> so <of a> what, <laughs> what he's at what he's asking is is there's two types of like spring uh, pellet guns i'm picturing sorry you falling you in the funny? pool and coming out like dripping wet take, be like okay just taking kidding, the camera back. with me the tripod <laughs> is like that far from the edge it's very close <laughs> but there's different types of spring pellet guns the ones with the brake barrel is what yeah. he's talking about. Yep, yep, and then yep. this kind with like an under lever braking mechanism that co collapses oh. the spring. Okay, and yeah. it has like a fixed barrel and then like a little sliding breech that opens. Yeah. That's like the Diana that he's talking about. Okay. The, the marketing approach 
the design philosophy is that those are more accurate. Um, and I mean, I, I buy into that because what happens is when you cock something, that brake barrel like a million times, that joint can loosen up. And so your point of impact can change. Can change. Yeah, over like maybe a very long haul or maybe the locking wedge yeah. or ball ball detent like just wears out or whatever. And, and in that gun you don't because it's all like a fixed fixed system. But the, the philosophy is that it will do better. But in the R9, and you guys are about to see this in a couple of days, that thing had no problem shooting half inch groups at 50 yards with the H&M Terminator. And that's a regular just brake barrel. It just had a really good design with its lockup. Mm. where it kept everything in really good alignment and mm -hmm. but um, that being said I have an Air Arms TX200 that I absolutely love because of that 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 fixed barrel design so yeah I don't know is it easier to cock this is it's if any it's the same to harder oh because you have less leverage so, uh, typically yeah okay yeah but that but if but if you're like just seeking accuracy that's not like the way necessarily to find it, even though to me the logic is sound that it would that it would do better long term. But you look, but from Diana and Viral and some of these other elite mm -hmm. brake barrel manufacturers, they don't. I don't think they have problems with that. So essentially, the answer is logically you could follow that that path that path. Yeah. And say yes, okay, it's reasonable to assume that a brake barrel will over time loosen because of the spring but well in, because of the lockup because of the lockup but mm -hmm. in reality there have been no tests done and we've never heard of that issue from users so well it's, maybe there are people that you know that my problem is i, I shoot feel like them, you would have heard about it well You're i shoot them over the well form. you hear about it a lot with the less expensive brands okay you do it's a problem yeah things wear out the joints wear out the barrel starts to get loose and wander mm. but it just tends to not what's less expensive Money wise or brand wise? Money wise. Like three hundred dollars and below. And below. So three hundred and fifty dollars and above. The 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 nicer German brake barrels tend to be four hundred ish. Okay, so go or for, more. So if you the go nice for a German and barrel. English brake barrels are kind of four hundred to say seven hundred. That's the okay. good. That's the good stuff. Okay. And then anything below that, it's not that it can't be accurate, but it's just it's just not designed and built as well. Okay. So kind of the old adage, you get what you pay for. You get what you pay for. You get what you pay for. Yeah. Okay. For sure. That's a good point. Yeah. Okay. So next question, from Bushwookie thirteen. Bushwookie. <laughs> that's awesome. I like it. I like it a lot. I'm the Bushwookie. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's Chewbacca. That's Chewbacca. <laughs> I mean, interchangeable, I imagine. Posted Wait, to Chewbacca it. is a Wookiee. He is a Wookiee. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you were about to lose your Star Wars card on that one. <laughs> Woo! That was close to being redacted. <laughs> um, okay, so this was posted to Ask AAC. Where is all your shooting vids at? Oh, because <laughs> that's on the vlog. He's asking on the vlog. Yeah, to ask AAC. The Airgun Exploration and oh. Advancement Channel. The other So channel. if you go to YouTube and you put in the search, you can <laughs> you can just put in the search at YouTube AAC and it will bring up both channels. The one with 64,000 subs is the one where yeah. all the full reviews are. Yeah. The one with 11,500 subs is this one here, the vlog. Just so, type in his name, pick the one with more subs. That's where all the shooting videos Yeah, that's where the full reviews are. Or, But technically, it's the Airgun Exploration and Advancement channel. Uh-huh. But well, AEAC, just type in his name and pick the one with but more AEAC subs. But AEAC pulls it up just as, just <laughs> as easy. Yeah. yeah. They be over there, bro. Ah, they there. They be there. Okay, so this is from Ninja Rog. This is posted to an Ask AEC video. Steve, I would really like to hear what you think on a review on the Hotson Hydra multi-barrel 0.177.22.25 cal. Maybe you will be able to get around to doing one soon. And what weight pellet you think to use in it? Keep up the great line both of you are doing. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Oh, right. Thank you. I said thank you, and he said thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanking each other. We're thanking each other. So I texted when I looked at that question yesterday. That's actually, a good question. It is a good question. I texted That's Blaine. Blaine, um, Blaine is the um, he's the guy at the top of Hot Sun USA. He's also a part owner. Blaine Manifold. I was wondering why you were texting with all those people yeah, yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> Johan and Blaine getting answers to all these questions for y'all, yo. 
<laughs> and he um, so funny. and he responded very fav favorably to the hot sun. Like he had mentioned a month back that he wants to start getting the 2020s sent this way, you know, to pepper in. Yeah. Yeah. And and I had let him know that the reason I picked this question is because I've been getting a lot of requests to review the Hydra. And what makes the Hydra so special is one, it's a hot sun. It's a good sun. name because the multi head. Well, no, I think of like Hail Hydra from like the Avengers. It's very sinister. Right, but do you know what a Hydra is? Like a fire hydrant? No, it's a mythical beast, beast with, with the multiple multi -head heads. heads. You cut off one, two grow back. Oh, so yeah. So multiple yeah. barrels. Multiple oh, heads. very clever. <laughs> but that's what it is. It has that interchangeable barrel system, which is, everyone's got really excited about. And they know that because it's a hot sun, it's going to be powerful, accurate, reliable. It's going to be all these good. And it's going to be reasonably priced. So I'm very excited. So hopefully they'll send one. But he responded very favorably. What weight, so I'm pellet, sure they will. What weight pellet do you think you'd use in it? Um, the hot sons his, tend to all be overpowered. His entire closet. So I always go heavy. Just go. I mean, I'll have to get it here to see, but you tend to have to go heavy with the hot sons because that company's philosophy is they they appreciate power over efficiency. So that's going to be three reviews in one. Yeah. Uh huh. We'll charge extra for it. Uh huh. <laughs> I promise. Uh huh. Katy gets mad when I spend like uh -huh. three weeks on one air gun, uh -huh. like with the continuum. Uh -huh. <laughs> and you look up and you're like, oh. <laughs> Why are we making the same time, amount of money? Kaja's like, time to pay bills. What do you have to contribute? I'm like, uh, <laughs> well, the review will be good. This cake I have made for you. <laughs> yeah. No, FX was good. They took care of me on that. Yeah. Okay, so this is from Skinny Mitch Pettengill. This was posted to Ask AAC. Love it all in the family this week. I know you touched on it a little many times, including tonight, but I feel like a lot of people just don't get it. A pellet dumping its energy versus passing through and how FPS can affect this. Since you've done a lot of work with ballistic gel, I'm thinking maybe you can come up with a way to explain it to where people will understand. Can you guys hear the crows in the background? Because I'm watching the crows go from tree to tree, like just oh, 75 feet. Here comes one right here. There they go. They love our fountain right here. And there goes the... And there goes the oh, wait, no. What is he He's doing? circling the fountain. He wants to come for a drink. So last week, true story, Katya and I were at the, at the kitchen window, and there's this, there's this husband and wife crow that like to come and play and drink in our fountain every day. It could be a gay couple with an... You don't know. Yeah, it could be. I mean, it is 2020. But they, they brought with them to the fountain a, um, a mockingbird... Chick, chick that they had just plucked from the nest and they were drowning it in the fountain and pulling all the feathers off it and the two mockingbirds were like dive bombing it like crazy literally making strikes on the yeah. on the crows yeah and so ever since then the crows have tried to come back to yeah, the fountain yeah there he is all those different bird noises is one mockingbird over here that has claimed our backyard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so ever since the crows have tried to come back, because he would come like four days in a row and just drink out of that fountain. But ever since he ate one of the chicks, um, the mockingbirds have been guarding, guarding. Fiercely this, this backyard. Fiercely. And I remember even like him. a day later, he came by and tried to just, just literally flew low by it and a mockingbird just came in and like grazed him, dive by him. So. They've been very fiercely protecting it ever since then. They're pretty aggressive, mockingbirds in general. Yeah. A lot right up there with blue jays. Yeah, they're aggressive. Yeah. Once they claim a piece of dirt for their own, it's theirs. But yeah. to answer his question. What was the question? Let me read it again. He, okay. <laughs> so basically. Read it quick this Something time. about dumping. Oh, um, pellet dumping its energy versus, per, versus <laughs> passing through and how FPS can affect us. So what he's making reference to is something that's called hydrostatic shock. It's a wren. I love the wren. Hey. I know. Okay, hydrostatic shock. Yep, yeah, yep, yep. He's making We're reference back. to hydrostatic shock, which is when a projectile impacts tissue. Oh. It actually sends... Oh. It's, okay. It sends out a shock wave through the tissue. Yeah. That, that, that can actually disrupt yes. or damage... Um, the central nervous system of that of yeah. that animal um, and it can actually cause that shock wave can cause additional tissue damage around the point of the impact that makes sense. so hydrostatic shock is something that's normally associated with the speed of high project of 
high velocity center fire projectiles yeah. and hollow points and you know these kinds of things and what he's making reference to is if you can transfer all of that energy into the critter mm -hmm. with a hollow point you're 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 increasing that hydrostatic shock you're increasing that pressure wave yeah that goes through the body and can either stun them or, or it can literally kill them yeah when you start pulling apart nerves and stuff like that and energy dumping is or a pellet dumping its energy is literally just losing its energy as it travels down range well there's two things that are going to happen it's either going to go right through the critter uh -huh. in which it just kind of poked a hole in it yeah and which can oftentimes not be humane right right yeah versus like you get this hollow point right that goes in there and just woof it yeah. like hits the brakes and that yeah. shock wave goes through yeah and that's what that's what takes them uh dispatches them more humanely right so when it comes to like air guns and stuff guys i don't know i mean most of what we're shooting are like squirrels and rabbits and birds and stuff and so it really doesn't matter but i think maybe when you get into like maybe some lower powered air guns and you're shooting rabbits and stuff you know mm -hmm. you want that more humane What's energy dumping in general? It's it's where the all of the energy from the pellet yeah. or slug yeah. gets transferred in into the inside of the animal instead of passing through it. Oh, so because uh, if I just poke if I just poke a hole in here, yep, 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 right? yep. I was you just poked the, the hole. I was thinking the opposite. You hit okay. it with a hollow point. So it does, absorbs all that so energy. So to his question, just foot pounds, whatever FPS, does that? affect it sure speed speed increases your hydrostatic shock but so the faster it goes the more shock you have the, if it if it tra if it transfers all of that energy to what you're hitting okay so and you, and the if it transfers depends on the pellet that you're using the yes type of pellet yeah if using. you use like a dome or a point it can just poke a hole and okay. go right through if you use a hollow point a softer one especially so speed alone is not enough is what we're saying no if you want to transfer everything you want speed combined with yes a, some so sort if of you've got point. like a really efficient pellet and it's traveling at a high speed, it's still just going to pass right through, make a nice clean hole, and not have a lot of energy dump. Correct. So you want a so, pellet so, so that it's travels really at a high rate of speed, but also is a hollow point or something like that that does its whole energy dump. It's, it's not that you want it. Well, it the, kills more tool. humanely, it sounds like. Yes, but they can not always be the most accurate choice. So it's a oh. balancing game. You don't automatically want one or the other. You have to learn your product. You have to learn the ammo. Hey, you have to apply yeah. it to what you're trying to do. Yeah. You know, if I'm if I'm shooting at something a hundred yards away, typically a dome shape or a slug is going to be more accurate than a hollow point. Not always. There are exceptions. Some mm. of these new slugs that are coming out are exceptions to that. But interesting. You 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 take it all into consideration. But long and short of it is, hydrostatic shock follows speed. Yeah. In the ability of that projectile to open up to expand and stop as it hits in its prey instead of go through it because yeah. you're transferring all the energy from the gun that's into the end of the bad guy so it that is very that's very fascinating you guys should google some ballistic if you haven't seen it you should google some ballistic gel videos that steve has done because it is quite fascinating in slow motion to see the projectile enter the gel and kind of the path that it makes like the bu the bubble it's kind of like a tailspin yeah it's remarkable like you know i do my gel it expands is insane i've done my gel testing at 50 50 yards yeah and even 100 yards in some of these vids and it's calibrated to fbi specs perfectly i invest a lot of time in doing that i've done a whole video on it for you guys but um yeah, we go it's, back years now to making that gel. Yeah, like, and I did it very recently with a couple of videos. I think I did it with the Air Arms TDR. I think yeah. I did it with the Hatsan Neutron Star. Well, you did it with the, is it the FX when all the pellets came out? No, I didn't do it with that. I did it with the, the most recently, the Hatsan Neutron, Neutron Star and the Air Arms S510XS TDR. But you did a pellet one alone where you tested the the new that that was in the neutron slugs. star video oh, was it? and it was in the arms tdr video obviously i know things <laughs> way more about your channel than you do. but what's interesting what to, to katya's point is a hollow point will open up and dump dump all of its energy in three to five inches typically yeah. where you'll have a, a diablo shaped pellet 16 17 inches i'm gonna if, go let the dogs in at, fi at 50 yards so you know, again, it's a it's a tool. You just got to figure out what you want to do, 
understand how the machinery works and how that's applicable to your end goal. I think that that's the whole, that's the whole takeaway. Yeah. Yeah. All right, next question. Okay, hold on, I we've, have to get situated. We've beat that one to death. It was an interesting topic. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is from Bose15015. This was posted to an Ask AEC's video. Um, the guns you test, do you keep them or do you have to send them back? Even if the gun is a piece of junk, do you keep it? <laughs> so I haven't reviewed anything. Well, I take that back. I have reviewed some that I wouldn't buy. Yeah. Have you? Yeah. Tell but us I wouldn't more. buy at this stage of the game. But when you and I were first getting our start yeah. and we were living paycheck to paycheck and, yeah. you know, yeah. absolutely, sure. I would buy those because they get the job done just fine. They just don't have the refinement, the quality, the amenities, yeah. but they're accurate and they get the job done. Yeah. It's just like driving a Yugo versus a Ferrari. The ownership experience is vastly different. Do they still make Yugos? I don't they know. It's do just a, it was Yugos. just an, yeah. it was just an, uh, an example. An example. But to answer the question, um, most all of the most all of my sponsors ask for them back. It ain't like. Paul Capello in the old days where you, the air gun lodge where you see like 50 guns. No, it's not like that. Um, they all ask for them back. Um, that being said, um, there are there is one manufacturer that kind of like just wants me to keep it. It's like their feelings would be hurt if I did it. And then there's one whole, uh, distributor retailer that if I want to hold on to it for three years, they don't say anything to me. Um, in my mind, I know it's theirs. In their mind, they know it's theirs. And if they called for it back, I'd give it to them back. But other than that, um, I send everything. Yeah. I just send it back because it, it drives her nuts, and we don't have room. We and, don't have room for that guy. And it's right. honestly wasteful of the stuff. So it all it all goes back. Ninety nine percent of it goes we're back. We just we're not a you know, not a. It's just a house. We don't have like a warehouse or a facility. Like mm -hmm. it's just a house. Yeah. And to be <laughs> honest, you know, I I um. I'm not inexpensive for the week or two or three I invest, you know, in putting together these videos and doing all of this work. So to also keep the yeah, gun. Yeah, it feels gluttonous. It feels gluttonous and it just, just doesn't interest me. Yeah, they compensate me for my time financially. Yeah. And I just send them back. Okay, next question from Jose Silva. This was posted to the Hudson Flash Pop Point 22 video. Hello, I want to buy a PCP, but I'm having trouble picking it up because I don't have experience with it. I want a rifle that is a little powerful and that can do over 40 rounds per fill. I want something that has a price below $600. Can someone help me with this? I think he can help himself in the, he posted the question in which video? Hudson Flash Pop Point 22. <laughs> or Hudson Flash Carbine Point 25. I think that I think that's three to three to five hundred dollar price point. Okay. Something like that. Power's there, the accuracy is there, the efficiency is there. If you want it to be, there's a hammer spring adjust the hammer spring's adjustable in both of those guns. So you can tune for big power and a hard drop off, or you can tune for moderate power and a nice long less long efficient shot curve. You can kinda of do it. I remember you really liking that one. I just like the hot sons. They're just they just you get a lot for your money. Mm. You really do. And then they, they like me, so it's a good... <laughs> <laughs> but it's not dependent on you liking them. No. Okay. No. No, it is what it is. I mean, it's a great yeah. product. Okay. Last two questions. We're, we're almost there. Yay. Almost there. Okay. This one is from Jerome Morse Eater. That's fantastic. Jerome Morse Eater. This was posted to the FX Crown Continuum video. The Crown Continuum has an amazing level of performance with the 700 millimeter barrel. How would it perform with a power plenum? So something you guys all need to know about the Crown is, I don't know the exact date, but sometime around a year ago, maybe it was more, when the power plenum was in the works, skunk works for like the Impact and the Dreamline and some of these others, FX went back to the drawing board and they hogged out the receiver in the continuum. Mm -hmm. I actually saw a cutaway of it when I was when we were in Sweden. Yeah, and um, it really opened up the inside of that receiver, opened up all those air passages 
kind of giving it a similar type of functionality to an external power plenum on something like an impact or a dreamline or a wildcat while while it being contained within the gun so that you can have that crown continuum classic looking rifle yeah so it's kind of like it's it's kind of like you know I mean, you saw the video yourself, maybe not here, but if here or the other channel. I mean, 180 shots at like 35 foot pounds in 22 and like 80 shots at like 40 some foot pounds in 22. I mean, how much more efficiency and energy are you going to pull out of a, I mean, it's, it's good. It's good. That's because of the work they did to that receiver and hogging it out, among other things. So you think the plenum... If it does make a difference, I mean, how much better could you possibly get? It, it's it's better, but on the on some of the other guns they went external, and on something like the Crown they went internal. It just depends on what they're trying to do with the look of the gun. The, that external power plenum does give you more than the Crown, but the Crown is not far behind. It's nipping at the heels. It's certainly not a reason to be like I'm going to get that one instead of this one, unless you need a 150 foot-pound Crown. Which is absurd. If you need that, go buy a Bushbuck 45 or a Texan or or a 30 cal. Or if you want to stay in the FX line, stay in a 30 cal. Get a 30 cal or a 357 Impact or Wildcat or something. Yeah. What are the birds with the pointy wings that look like little boomerangs? Pointy wings. Yeah, they're like little, and they've got that little tail, but they got like pointy little the wings. Swallow. Oh, it's a swallow? Yeah, the ones that buzz around the lake at night? Yeah, well, I just saw like two. The swallow. Oh. Cool. Are they black or gray? They look brown, but I mean, sunglasses. It's a swallow. Are they small? Big like small. a dog. Swallow. We're kind of bird aficionado. Not really. I mean, we don't know anything about birds. Well, Steve knows some stuff about birds. But I just like them. I think they're pretty. Okay, so next one. Last one. Last one. Yay. Did you see my and then we get to go to Costco. <laughs> Give us another fat. No, Give us another not, fat no. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we're always going to Costco. Like I every Costco. time we do this video, we're like off to Costco, off, off to Walmart. <laughs> That's our two favorite places. <laughs> every to shop. week. We have Walmart and Costco dates. <laughs> Just for the two of us, because that's necessary. <laughs> okay. So. I mean, Costco can be exciting when you've been cooped up for ten weeks. That's true. And I'm so excited. The gyms in Florida open tomorrow. Oh, and I haven't been to, to the gym in almost three months because right before the COVID thing started, we were in Europe for two weeks yeah, filming. Steve's got his hazmat suit. He's ready to go. I'm fat and flabby and not strong anymore. We all are. Wait We've to all go gained back. like Dying. an additional seven pounds. Midnight tonight it opens. I'll be there first thing in the morning. At midnight tonight? It's no. like a Harry Potter book I'll be there tomorrow, tomorrow morning. Yeah. Were we together when I had that book like... Seven for Harry Potter release, and I was at Walmart at like midnight waiting for them to roll out the cart. No, college. That, that was, was before college. me. That was in college. That was a good time. It was all this hype. So book seven comes out. It's all of this hype. I've read all of the books. I'm super excited about seven. I've never gone out when a book has like just been released. Like I just get it, you know, the next day or whatever. Like on Amazon, like a normal person or whatever you did back then. I don't remember what we did back then. Um, but I was into it. I was ready to go. So book seven comes out and I'm at Walmart at like midnight along with all these other nerds. And I was expecting this big, you know, hubbala. There's like 12 people, including me. Some of them are dressed in capes with their glasses or robes with their glasses and their wands. And that's cool. I'm all into it. They roll out this giant crate, giant crate of books and just roll it out in the middle of the store. Obviously more than 12 books, but all 12 of us are like so hyped up and so in need of this book that we like bum rush this crate like it's the last food source in an apocalypse and grab our little books, barely make a dent in this giant crate and like shuffle off to the counters like the nerds that we are. It was fantastic. <laughs> I'm not even gonna say anything. It was so stupid. Do we have another question? Yeah, I think we're at like one hour. Well, whose fault is that show and tell? Yours. Okay. This is from <laughs> Always <A> yours. <laughs> That's the truth in this family. This is from ASB All-in-One. Posted to the FX Crown Continuum. Hi, man. 
For break barrel air rifle, the scope is booziest west west. This is going to be a lot of... Hold on, I don't need to sit up for this. I'm going to need my faculties for this question. I'm going to hold this while you're doing that. Hi, man. <sighs> for break barrel air rifle with scope is best in this brand. Discovery question mark, vector optic question mark. Please confirm on your choice. Waiting waiting your response. Your one subscriber from India. Hey. Hey. I hope you will safe. Stay home. Stay safe. You're not the one subscriber from India. No. We've got other people. Oh, there's in tons. India. Yeah, like almost every country now. It's I like, love me some India. It's the same. We go. like Indian food. I want to go. And we like Indian culture. Oh, I like Indian people. And the culture. But you work with them all the time in I IT. Know, they're great. Look at this. Nice. Very nice. I'm very excited. Very family for this. oriented. So this seems oriented. gorgeous. In in its substantial. Wait, the question. Yeah, I know. What was the question? It was about scope. He wants to know what's what what scope to put on his brake brake barrel. Air rifle. Which scope is is best in this brand? Discovery vector optic. Yeah. I have no idea what's best. Um, I know that. The first thing that pops into my mind when I think brake barrel scope are the Virau line of scopes because they, they're very lightweight and simplistic mm -hmm. and they seem to hold up really well and they're good quality and they're reasonably priced. Um, and and they're, just, they're just smaller in general. So I like that on top of a brake barrel. But I also have worked with several scope manufacturers that are spring arrayed at Hawk a lot of the Hawk stuff is spring aerated. Like right now, I'm doing their Air Max SF Compact or some something like that mm -hmm. on the um, on the R9, and it's held up great. Um, Optisans has got some spring aerated scopes. MTC um, is just sending one to do on the upcoming HW35 stainless video. Um, it's like an MTC light hydro light or something like that i forget but it's coming so you have lots of choices just make just do your due diligence and make sure that it's rated to handle that reverse recoil that that push pull recoil of a springer mm -hmm. you know it's interesting i don't know if this has any bearing on it but we were watching giles on instagram live like what a week ago he did two hours he did two hours and the part that i remember this is really risky look at that Oh my God! <laughs> the part that I remember the him, catch it. the part that I remember him talking about is he was never a big, um, he was never a big believer, I guess, a big proponent of scopes. You know, he kind of was under the impression that one scope was the same as the next scope as far as optic quality. Um, but he found when I think Justin from Utah Air Guns um, was introducing him or showed him like a thousand dollar scope. Um, at the, you know, in the parking lot of Utah Air Guns, and he was just genuinely surprised at the difference between, you know, a $300 scope and a $1,000 scope. So maybe it's fair to say that get the best you can afford rated for a Springer, and that's going to be your quality. I, I it sounds like there's a difference. I would add to that. <laughs> See how it works? Yes. I would add yes, to I, do. I would add to that that a lot of those scopes with the really um, high quality glass, they're not necessarily spring rated. Some some maybe. Yeah, you have to get spring rated. So do 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 your due diligence. It's that push pull recoil in a springer that destroys high dollar center fire rifles yeah. rifle scopes. And people think to themselves, Oh, it works great on a center fire, which makes way more power than this little dinkier break barrel air gun. I don't like this. This is not working for me. I'm just <laughs> going to take that. But um, but the springers tend to destroy those scopes. So stick with your, you know, in the Hawk line, it's the, uh, it's the Air Max. It's the um, Vantage and, and Optison. It's the HX line. And um, and I don't know really, in the Viral, all the Viral stuff is good. I think BSA makes it. And then, um, then that MTC that's coming this way that Air Guns of Arizona actually put um, is recommending that scope for that HW35. So it's Springer rated and it's nice and small and compact. So, what's that one brand? I might, I might say too much here. What's that? Don't get me in trouble. What's that one <laughs> brand that um, is made by? Oh shit! I don't want to get anybody in trouble. The one that's like. Like backed by like a super 
big scope glass company, but they make like a scope for air guns. Oh, uh, you're talking about Element Optics with Matt Dubber, Ted Beer, and Shane Keller and FX air guns? I don't know. Yeah, that's what you're talking about. Okay. So what's your question? I don't think that's what I'm talking about. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> no, that's not what I know. That's not what I'm talking about because the company I'm thinking of actually makes tactical scopes for like the military and for like some serious firearm. You're on the right. You're on the right track. Yeah. You're. you're we're talking about the same thing. Okay, we're. But talking you're not really about supposed that. to talk about that. Okay, we're not talking about that. No. Okay. Well, yeah. you know. We say goodbye. Bye. So we can go to Costco. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys. Um, Monday, Tuesday, I'll be in the chair editing that R9 video, and it should be up midweek at the latest, I would think, for you, the full review over on the other, other channel, the Air Gun Exploration and Advancement channel, AEAC Home. Do you want to mention your merchandising thing? We haven't even started it. Well, say something. Okay. See if there's an interest. Okay. So we're thinking about producing like some logoed merchandise like t-shirts hats mugs backpacks mugs, sweatshirts backpacks, hoodies something yeah. some like things like that um not a huge line at the very beginning maybe not a huge line ever we want it to be pretty specific in terms of you know like printed here in the states made hopefully in america. locally made in america like i Quality, mean the t-shirt is like made in cotton america cotton stuff no poly junk um you know we want it to be like really good stuff um, and pretty unique. Like, I hate crewnecks. I don't know why there's not more v-necks in the logoed industry. I, I want v-necks, damn it. Um, so just stuff like that. Maybe some baseball tees. But would love to get a pulse, I guess, on if A, that's something that you guys would be interested in, or B, um, if you would be interested in it, like, what type of merchandise is most relevant to you in your life? Um, yeah, like Katya's major is, is uh, fashion, fashion merchandising. merchandising. So she's thinking some really cool designs and logos with AEAC and maybe the squirrel and the Oregon Exploration Advancement Channel. Some of the more common sayings you see across the channels. You know, Maybe a definition of Hydra. Review, discuss, win. On a t-shirt. Um, you guys know the best way to thank them. Mm. Well, you know, don't give it all just away. Just all that Jeez. fun stuff, you know, if, if there'd be an interest in that. In, in, yeah, if there's anything in funny clo that clothing Steve wear. says or, or like... Not funny, but it's he said it so often that now it is funny. There's a lot of oil on there. I don't think that's one of the things you say. No. <laughs> yeah, rub, 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 rub. Like, oh. like putting a paper towel on a pizza. All I'm right. sorry, man, but this is heavy. It's supposed to be heavy. That's badass. I'm really excited for that one. So Can we'll I start on it? that. I'll start on that next week. Can I dry pocket? No. Because I don't even I don't do nothing until I read the book. Boo. Boo. Because that magazine's sitting in there and... Boo. And we want to be safe. Yeah, Every time I get yeah, these new guns in, yeah. I go all through them. I don't even trust that there's not like a pallet in there. That's just the for way. the best. Yeah, you got to be really careful. All right, we're done. Yeah. Okay, so I'll see you guys in a couple days on the other channel. Thanks for watching and enjoy your Sunday. And we'll hit you up in another week or two with another Ask AEAC. Yeah. All right, bye. Bye. No song. I no to song pee. today. You suck. I have to pee. I can't think of a song.